Um, anyway, my name's Jamie Broom. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, Jamie L. Broom. And um, my company is Flix Internet Marketing or ClicksInMySite.com. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about using WordPress as a CMS. Uh, and there is going to be a panel discussion. What time is that, Anthony? Tomorrow, 11, I think? Yeah, so they're going to be talking about WordPress. Joomla, Drupal, um, tomorrow at 11. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to go over a few, you know, different themes that are out there um, and the ways that you can make a WordPress website look pretty much any way you want to. Um, and then talk about SEO and how that plays into your website and why that's important, as well as the keywords. Um, and might talk a little bit about analytics. If any of you have any questions at any point, feel free to jump in and ask. And if any of you have any other suggestions or comments while I'm talking, feel free. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about Google Guides, Webmaster Tools, um, and <coughs> how the plugins will, will fill in some of the issues um, surrounding that. Um, how many of you have a WordPress website or blog that you use right now? So most of you do. And how many of you are just like thinking about, okay, maybe I should transfer over to WordPress? Some people. Okay, good. So this is the right place for you to be in. Um, yeah, it's, so WordPress.org is different than WordPress.com because the .com is, um, that's going to be hosted on WordPress's website. And it'll say WordPress.com slash whatever your name, whatever the name of the blog is. Whereas WordPress.org, you're going to host that on your own hosting, or you're, you're going to have your own domain for that. So the great thing about WordPress.org, you can manage both your website and your blog. So it doesn't have to look like a blog when somebody comes to your homepage. It can actually look like a website, not just have the blog at the front of the domain. Um, and the best part about WordPress is all these plugins that you can add in and the different widgets that you can use and manipulate everything. So this is my website. Um, just to show you, just one of the many themes that there are out there. Um, you come to the, you know, you type in clicksmysite.com and you hit this page. This is my home page. So it doesn't look like a blog. But if you click on blog, this is the actual blog. I have like, I think maybe four blog posts up. But this is the actual blog. So, and it, it, you know, it looks like a traditional standard blog. Um, this is another WordPress, this is a CMS website. And Ford Motor Company actually uses WordPress for um, their auto shows portion of their website as well as the New York Times. I think they have a lot of developers manipulating things, but <laughs> they also use WordPress. And this is just some of the different themes. Um, so once you have your, there's, a, there's another session probably on on WordPress and how to set that up as a content management system. But once you have your website up, I mean, one of the first things that you want to think about is SEO. And what is SEO? Well, this is a formal definition. It's the process of improving the volume and the quality of traffic to websites from search engines via natural or organic search results. Does anyone, um, I'm going to take a gander on what I mean by quality. Notice the word quality. Not spam. <laughs> Not spam, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the right people. So if you have your website optimized, uh, the right people are going to be coming to your website. So if you're selling drum sets and your website up there, drumsets.com, and somebody is out there searching for guitars and they accidentally land on your website because maybe you were talking about guitars somewhere on your website or something. So they accidentally land on your website. Well, that's not targeted traffic because that person is not going to buy a drum set from you. 
they're looking for guitars. Um, so optimizing your website is going to help you be able to um, get more targeted results. Anthony, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, I know Google is, they're trying to make sure that they give people better results. How are they measuring their success when uh, someone from a Google search comes to your site? What, what do they consider a successful um, link to your site first when you're a successful search result? Well, um, the, they have a, Google has a search engine optimization starter guide that I advise everyone to read and it just goes through. Has anyone read that or does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, okay. So they have this guide and you can go through that and you can say, okay, these are the things I'm supposed to do to my website to make it optimized for Google. I'm um, saying what are the standards for, okay, this was a successful result where I go back. Oh, you mean if somebody clicks on to the web, to the search result and it's not what they're looking for? Yeah, what does Google, well, what qualifies as a successful business? You can measure your bounce rates. If you're using analytics, you can measure your bounce rate. So if you're getting a lot of traffic and you have a high bounce rate, then that you can tell that that's not targeted traffic. So bounce rate is how you measure the quality yeah. of the part. Can we talk about bounce rate? What? Can we talk about bounce rate? Do you want to talk about it right now? Well, I don't, I don't get <laughs> it. Because I understood bounce rate is they come to your blog, then they, they leave relatively quickly. They don't look at anything else on your site. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have an audience that comes and reads what you write on a daily basis, they might not look at anything else on it. They may come and read just what's there that day, and then they go away. So wouldn't wouldn't they affect? Wouldn't they increase? Well, it depends they how long they're staying. Right? It depends how long they're staying on your website. So if it's like zero seconds, they click on and they say, "Oh, this isn't what I'm looking for," and then they click off. So bounce rate is only uh, a very quick lead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. How, how, how is that scored if people open in alternate tabs, look at the stuff, and then close that? They could be there a little time or a long time. How does that affect that? Yeah, you can see that if you look at the analytics, you can see how long somebody's staying on your website or but, not. But if you open something in a tab and it sits there, yeah. you might open five or ten. Yeah, times, exactly. So it's not exactly going to be accurate because stuff like that does happen. Yeah. So you increase your rating if you encourage people to open it in a tab. <laughs> Anthony? I need to respond to my question. I oh. Oh, okay. Do you want to share? What part? <laughs> uh, you, you, you didn't get to say it because we were listening to the comment about uh, what were you saying. Oh, you were asking about the quality. Uh, the quality. I would say there's a combination of different factors. It's not only just the bounce rate, but also how long someone is staying on your site. If they're, on the, if they're on the site for more than 10 seconds, I would count that as a successful, yes, they found what they were looking for. And then most people will be on and off in less than 10 seconds if your site loads reasonably fast and all these other factors can be play. Uh, but usually, how long does it take to, work, to read 200 words? It takes you up for 10, 45 seconds, something like that. And how long does it take you to scan, you know, yeah. 10 to 15 mm -hmm. seconds? Does Google give you bonus points if someone hits the print this? Right. <laughs> I do have an interesting question to yeah. ask Matt Cuts, but uh, from what I've read, the longer, if somebody comes to your site, for blogs, they don't really look at your bounce rate very much because of precisely what you were saying. Okay. That somebody will come and they'll read just the one post for the day, and then off they go. And uh, to answer the other gentleman's question, I think if they open multiple pages from your same site and multiple tabs, that counts as going to other. Uh, other pages, so they'll be very interesting. If you have like yard or some other related post bucket, say, and then click on those, that's going further into the site. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to have to probably go, go ahead. I, I just have uh, something to add. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's good for marketers to see where people bounce away from because if it's one particular page, or, you know, then you can redo it and can see if that changes. So. I think it's the most useful to be tool to see like, if there's something overwhelmingly offending people or they're just not interested in. Right, exactly, yeah. Jamie, I see you have many, many websites. And in perusing those, they come from different locations. So I'm in one, 
and then back out one, it takes about three seconds to scan it. Mm -hmm. Does that help your rating or hurt your rating since they're all from the same Google search and I'm really going after your material? Um, so if you're talking about if somebody had multiple websites? You have, there are basically the whole first screen, which is 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has your name in it. And, you know, I'm packing a few of those. My name well. personally? Uh, <laughs> well, assuming you are Jamie Brewer. Oh, so you just Googled me. Okay, so I didn't understand. I, I did that. Right. And now I'm going in and out of your content. Uh -huh. But your content is dispersed against many different uh, uh, top level domains. Okay. So therefore, I don't know whether Google's smart enough to say, okay, I'm really looking at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or whether I'm saying, well, this is just a search term, and I really don't care what's going on. So I don't know if it's yeah. I mean, I don't know how that's. I mean, my name pops up for lots of different websites. Not all of them are my websites, so I don't have control over what's going on with those actually. So I think you may yeah, I think you might be confused. I don't think I don't know a whole lot, but I don't think Google ranks your site based on your number of bounces. That's just for you as a website owner to know right. whether people are interested in your site and whether they back or whether they just push the back button or close it. But Google ranks your site based on links to it, mm -hmm. and they don't rank your site based on. Right, and they Google also Google. yeah whether you're complying with their Google guidelines as well is something that they will rate your site. <coughs> um, okay, so. Um, a more informal um, definition of search engine optimization, where I like to tell people it's just a way of improving your communications. So the better you can communicate with the search engines, the better that they can communicate with your potential customers or your readers or your clients. Um, so I mean, a way of looking at it is like the search engine being kind of the middleman, and your business, your blog, your website is over here, you know, and, and talking to the search engines, and then the people are talking to the search engines, so they're going to drive traffic back to your site. So the better that you can communicate with search engines, the better off you're going to be um, at reaching your intended audience, which is people, not search engines. Um, so some resources I have is just talking about the Google um, search engine optimization starter guide and their um, Google webmaster tools. Does that everyone use the webmaster tools? Who's a webmaster? Okay, so everyone should be using the Google Webmaster Tools because that's going to tell you a lot about um, the website that you're managing or if you're managing multiple websites as well. Um, some other resources if you're interested in learning more about um, search engine optimization. And um, Nick brought up a good point about um, link building, links being very important. So I'm kind of talking about your on-page SEO today, but the link building and um, kind of PR, I guess, that, um, that also goes along with search engine optimization is, is a big part of getting traffic to your website as well. Um, so my presentation also, it's, gonna, it's on my website. So if you go to, it's clickstomysite.com, and then you can click on blog. What was that? Clickstomysite.com, and then you can click on blog. And I put a copy of the presentation. It's just the first blog post that's up there right now. Um, so that's the Google Webmaster Tools. Um, Yahoo Site Explorer and Bing Webmaster Tools are kind of the equivalent for that for those search engines. And then there's a link for the Google um, SEO Starter Guide. So a um, few of the searchability issues, and we talked about some of these in the last WordPress session for those of you who were in there. Um, so having a robots.txt file, having four or four pages, um, being able to 301 redirect the pages that you change your URLs or you change the name of the page, um, those come in very handy if you, um, I, had, I use 301 redirects a lot because I change the names of URLs sometimes. Um, so that comes, that comes in handy and also um, if, if you maybe migrate your, your blog or your website over to WordPress, some of the titles might change. Yes, Anthony. What's important to put in the permanence when you edit, now that WordPress lets you edit the permanence? What's um, important to put in there? I'm going to talk about that whenever I get into the keywords, but that's a good point to raise. Yeah. So, so 
um, the URL structure and the permalinks, that's going to play a big factor in your SEO. And also having an XML sitemap up. Um, <coughs> some keywords um, and being found. And these are the things that you're going to want to really do a lot of research on are, are your keywords. So if you think that you know you have a couple of good products um, on your website or you know what people are interested in, um, I advise you to do some keyword research because there's probably a hundred other keywords that maybe you hadn't thought about. Uh, but these keywords, they're going to allow the search engines um, to know what your website or your blog post is about. And it's not just about using using keywords for the search engines, but also for your readers. So whenever they come to your website, they're going to be able to find what they're looking for easier. If that's what they search for, that might be highlighted uh, in the search results for them. And they'll be able to see that easier. They'll be more likely to click on your website. And then once they get to your website, it makes sense that if that was a keyword that they chose to get to your website, it makes better navigation sense that if they see that keyword again on your website, they'll click on that to find out more about it. Uh, so where do these keywords go? Um, important to put them in your title tags. Your title tags should be different for each um, of your web pages or your blog posts. Your anchor text is very important. So instead of saying, uh, click here to learn more about drum sets, and having click here be, be, um, be the link that goes to the next page, you would say, learn more about drum sets. Have drum sets be the keyword, and when somebody clicks on that drum set, then that takes them to the page with more information about drum sets. Does that help you or help the person, the other person? It helps the search engines, <laughs> so that helps you. It helps, um, but it also helps for navigation. Mm -hmm. You can click here and show where is your ranking. You can lower your ranking. Jane, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, how do you reconcile, like, copy bloggers and content guys telling you that whenever you give a, uh, uh, like a call to action, if you say click here, mm -hmm. people are more likely to do it. So how do you reconcile the, um, like the, the psychological advantage of saying click here? You know, disadvantage in terms of search. The way I reconcile it in my head is that people should be able to tell that there's a link. So if, if there's a link and somebody's coming to a website, they should be able to see that that's a link. But that, I mean, that's a good question because also in your, whenever you're designing your website, you want to think about having all of your links look the same, mm -hmm. having them all maybe be underlined or bolded, a different color, of course. So that's going to guide people and say, oh, okay, they can click there. Whatever the cursor runs over, it should change to the corner for the hand. Um, does that answer your question? So I don't. I think people should know how to come to a website, and without being told to click here, they should be able to see that those are links, and that should guide them through. Um, but it might. Actually, as of right now, I mean, hopefully that happens in the future. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like not not but, so much that people don't know, but yeah. like an actual call to action might like, spur on. Right, like, right. Versus. You can make, I mean, buttons and things like that, um, bigger letters and buttons. People, I mean, people know to click on buttons and making them look like actual buttons and not just square boxes. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I just have something to add to that. I, sure. I do, I build sites for clients, and I've actually run into this conversation with some of my clients. They want their button on the link on their site to say click here. And so I run into trying to talk them out of it for the exact reason that yeah. you said, like, well, they won't know, they won't know to click there. They will, so they when I can't <laughs> talk them completely out of it, <laughs> I've started to just, we'll keep the click here wording, and we'll just say click here to buy, to learn more about Trump, and I'll make the whole thing work. Right. So that the word drum is in the link, which helps with the search engine. And then the client's happy because it says here. <laughs> okay. So I kind of, you kind of straddle the, the line and just on the side. Yeah, good point. Well, why don't you put up a graphic that says click here? Well, sometimes it's, if it's in the paragraph, you know, it's just part of the content, you know, and if they want, you know, the, the last sentence in the, yeah, in the paragraph or something like that. that. That's the same it's a good work around them, yeah, because they probably don't uh, hurt your ranking if, if it's yeah. just a, an image that says click here and the anchor or the uh, alt, alt tag for that image right. says uh, and 
so you can do a redundancy and you don't get the negative right here. Okay, that's a good workaround. Okay, we better move quick or we're not going to get to the point in part. Okay, so we um, so URLs, um, that's going to be another place where you're going to put your keywords. Also, your alt tags, guess what? Um, search engines can't read images. So put alt tags on all of your images or your photos. Um, also, if you have blogs, you want to use your categories and your tags wisely with keywords. Um, keywords versus good content. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm not... I think people get this idea in their head, oh, SEO and keyword stuffing and all these crazy things. But really what you want to do is you want to write really good content. And then you want to go back through and you want to say, okay, are my keywords in this content? And, and um, <coughs> not stuff them in or anything, but you just want to make sure that they're there somewhere. Because contact, content is what is going to impact uh, people. But if you don't have the right keywords in place, you're not going to be able to get people to your website. So, And I've heard that uh, they're starting to get wise on the invisible keywords bit. If your keyword text color is the same as your background color, you'll get flagged. Yeah. That's true. So don't stuff your website with invisible keywords. Yeah, th they find out. <laughs> they figure things like that out. Yeah, they do. Black heading, is that the right term for that? Yeah, there's black hat SEO, which is kind of like the evil SEO, and uh, you can get in trouble. Like your website can be, like Google can say, okay, we're gonna blacklist you if you try to pull stuff like that. And then there's gray hat, which is kind of an iffy area where you don't really know what's right and what's wrong. And then there's white hat, which is you just have to follow all Google's rules all the time and listen to everything that Matt Cut says. Um, so keywords, um, first thing you're going to need to do if you have a website or blog, I'm sure most of you have known this already, is to use analytics. Google Analytics is a really good tool to track who's coming to your website, when they're coming, how long they're staying on your website, the bounce rates that we were talking about earlier, um, what websites people are coming in to your site from. And it's really easy, you sign up, it's free, Google Analytics is free and you sign up and you put a little snippet of code into your website. Um, and doing keyword research, some keyword suggestion tools, word tracker is good. The one that I use um, mostly is just the Google keyword tool. And it does, it gives you like approximate number of searches per month and things like that, which is um, pretty inaccurate sometimes, but it gives you an idea anyway. Um, so it's the point of all this, keywords and search engines and all this stuff, it's to get conversions, to get blog comments and sales, if you're a nonprofit, to get volunteers or donations, sign-ups. Um, so I'm just going to go back to talking about the permalinks. Um, WordPress by default, um, and it's any of you developers are out there and you can explain something better than I can, that's great. But I, I, the reason why I like WordPress so much is because I'm not a developer, I'm not a designer, but it's still pretty easy for me to slide all this stuff in. Um, so instead of putting your domain.com slash p in a bunch of characters, which is the default WordPress, you go into the WordPress settings and click on permalinks. And you'd want to use something like your domain.com slash your post title or your product name or your keyword, and you can have more control over your URLs this way. So the, this is what that page looks like, and it gives you some options that you can choose from. Um, and then there's the category base, tag base, and then this is a custom structure if you wanted to do that as well. Is it, is it true that Google doesn't read past the question mark in the URL? I don't know. I don't ever put question marks or characters like that in my URLs. I think they do. I think it could be, yeah. It, it just, it discourage, it's discouraging, I think. Um, and I think that having the keyword in there, if someone's searching for you know, boots, yeah. and you having that word in your URL as opposed to the question mark, yeah. is a little bit, you know, obviously it's going to be higher up in the search engine. I mean, I think they still read your page. I don't know what they think of the URL. Because, like, Joomla has, like, um, does anybody work with Joomla? 
So they have like these dynamic pages that they pull up and it has a bunch of characters and it's kind of hard to change all that stuff. Yeah, there is a function to get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think they still read the pages, but they might not think so highly of the URL. Or it's just a missed opportunity to put keywords in. Yeah. I was just going to explain anything after the question mark or parameters as far as the logic is concerned on that page. So it's going to take whatever is passed in the, after the question mark and do something on it. So like example, when you do a search on your WordPress blog, even if you have permalinks enabled, you're still going to see a question mark pass equals and then the, the search. So Google's never going to yeah, want that. Yeah, that's not indexed by Google. Right? Yeah. Because they're just framing. Well, they'll actually look at the content on the page rather than the URL, and they'll score the quality of it based on the content and the URL. And uh, I mean, I did an experiment. I was ranked number one for the term Mexican word of the day forever. And then we finally changed the, uh, something in the URL, and I'm not ranked one anymore, but my Slidoo page, which has the exact same stuff, is ranked one. Uh, but it has the next one in the URL. So. Right. So, you know, it's a good example. It me better, but generally, I think that they rank it. They give you a better quality score if it's in the URL. Right. The point, I think, though, is that, I mean, the, that content uh, before the question mark, that stuff's being seen by Google, it's just the stuff after it, if they, if they did index every instance of the question mark, they'd have multiple copies of the same thing. Because the parameters are not being in it. Right. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next I understand that Google favors links that go to video and then next to uh, audio content. Google favors things like Links going to video on the web page, audio, and then blogs. Does anybody have a comment on that? I, I don't know. I mean, they look at their content first. I think that's just how they organize the results page. I don't yeah. think they favor it. That's just how they organize the thing. Oh, OK. Yeah, you're talking about the search results. Yeah. Um, OK, so your permalinks, um, you also have an option whenever you um, put up a new page or edit your post. Uh, so this is the title of the page, and then down here is your permalink, so you can edit it right here. It's also called a slug. A slug, yes. Thank you, Anthony. Does slug length matter? <laughs> it matters what keywords you put in. It's only other space. It's slug length. Oh, God. Well, yeah, it matters what keywords you put in there, and it, it, it needs to be relevant to the content of your website. So don't try to think that, okay, you can just put in whatever you want for your uh, slug or your title, or your title or your page or your meta tags, and then just, you know, you'll get traffic to that website or you'll rank high for that. You need to have the correct content on the page as well. But can it get it too long, to I guess, where I was going? With the, oh, with the slug? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't want to have real long ones. So if you had like categories set up with your WordPress and you had like a parent child kind of thing, um, I mean, you don't want it to go out forever, but you know, I'd say no more than like, I don't try to do any more than two folders. What do they call it? Slashes, folders. Um, I mean, three max probably. Well, I've started to have some really long titles, and then that makes for a really, really long. So yeah, so your titles, wondering. that's why, so my title is paper click advertising, but I uh, can't see this, but the slug is actually PPC-services, so just shortening that title into actual keywords I got you. and making it smaller. Okay. Yeah. So what's your best practice for when you have multiple instances, uh, you know, you have a series of posts or something? What's, what, what do you find is the best practice for uh, saying rather than having a number of people? Okay, so if I was going to blog about maybe um, WordPress and I had like five different things that's going to blog about WordPress about, maybe I would name each of them WordPress, you know, plugins one, WordPress plugins two or something. Because that's, I mean, those, that's your keyword right there. You're going to want people searching for WordPress plugins to come to your website. I mean, it depends what your keyword is. And so in that case, you would just number. I would. I mean, because WordPress is the main... I wouldn't want to put WordPress, WordPress. If 
that was my main keyword. WordPress plugins SEO, WordPress plugins security, WordPress plugins. Yeah, exactly. You know, whatever the plugins you're at. Right. Analyzing on that particular blog and that article. Right. That's a better answer. <laughs> Depends on what you put in. <laughs> and this doesn't work, not show off or anything, but if you Google PPC Advertising in Pittsburgh, my website comes up, and this is the title tag um, of the website, and then you can see that the URL is here. And the meta tags are going to be kind of important because that, I don't know, I don't know if that's, that's not my meta tag, I don't think, but sometimes Google or Yahoo, they'll pull in that snippet of code from your meta tag, from your description. Um, and so that's what people will see. So don't think nobody's going to ever see that meta tag because they pull that in sometimes. Um, so WordPress plugins, very quickly installing and activating plugins. So you just go to your WordPress uh, dashboard and click on plugins and then you click on add new. You do a search for the plugin and you find the plugin and you install it. Um, <coughs> You have to have your, for this to work, you have to <coughs> have your files need to be rewritable. Okay, everybody knows how to install plugins? Okay, um, yeah, pretty easy, and then you just activate it. So the first WordPress plugin, the one that is most important probably for SEO is the all-in-one SEO pack. Does anybody use this? Lots of people use this, okay. Does anybody have one that they prefer over this? Just curious. Okay. Um, I, I use Headspace. Hmm? Headspace. Headspace, okay. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, so what this does, it automatically, it doesn't automatically place um, title tags in my description of your keywords, but it, it'll have a little, so your your page, your blog post will be up here, and then down below will be the all-in-one SEO pack. And then you put in your title here, your meta description, and your keywords. So you want to keep your title, you know, fairly short, 85 characters, I think, um, no more than that. And then, you know, your description, and each title should be different on each page or each post, and they should adhere to whatever your content is about. So when you put, when you do your WordPress blog entry, there's keywords that's part of WordPress over to the right. And that's different than the keywords that's, that are part of this plugin. Or will it use what you put over in the WordPress keywords? Like I think default? you have to put them in manually for for this plugin, particular plugin. Are you so talking if you're, about WordPress tags? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's different. Oh, yeah. that is different. Okay. So that's something you create yourself, and then they actually they appear underneath your blog post. At least they do on my blog. Yeah. Yeah. to organize within content but not for SEO. Well, yeah, I'm yeah, you'd want to use the tags for SEO too and put keywords in. Like categories but they're not hierarchical. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then there's the Google Analytic Hater. Does anyone use this? So you can easily access your you were talking about this earlier, right? Yeah, yeah so um, you can easily access your Google Analytics and see what's going on with your traffic from using this plugin. And this, this has like a dashboard widget, so you don't have to log into Google Analytics separately to see your, what's going on. Uh, Meta Robots. This is really a handy one because it allows you, it complies with the Google Webmaster Tools. Um, and the Yahoo Site Explorer for, um, so I guess if, if you, if the search engines have these crawlers and they're going about, you know, crawling the website and everything. Um, if you don't want them to see something, you can use this and you can say don't follow this, don't follow that. Um, but you can also use it to, so that they know to, you can allow them to see everything on your website. So it just makes it easier if you have this up so that they can tell pretty quickly um, that you want your website scanned or what you don't want scanned on it. Being able to edit the HD access file Yes. Later WordPress Yes, that's a very handy feature that you can you can edit the .htaccess file directly from this plugin. 
And also, you can verify your um, Google Webmaster Tools metadata, met, metadata in this plugin as well. Um, so I think, yeah, so it looks like this. Um, um, so it has a ton of settings. So there's RSS feeds, plugin settings, you can hide things. And this is what your robots.txt file would look like. So this is actually from my website. So it says, you know, allow, this is saying allow everything and then disallow all those folders. So if you have like test folders or you have archive things you don't need to show, you can use that. So this creates your robots.txt file for you, in other words. Yes, okay. yeah, exactly. And um, careful with some of these plugins because some of them override each other. It can cause some problems. Order of application. Hmm? Did somebody say something? Order of application. Order of application, yeah. General, down to the most specific. Right. Because um, I think I I installed this redirection one recently and kind of messed up some stuff. <laughs> but it's, it's good now. Um, so the redirection is good because you can it's really simple. So if you change the URL, um, your slug title, the title of your page or something, um, you can just put it in. The source URL is right here. And then whatever page you want it to be redirected to, you put that URL in there. And you just press add direction, add redirection, and then it shows all of the, go off from up here, the ones that you're redirecting. Yes. Is that used for affiliate and ask Is that what that's for? Why would you do that? Why would I do that? Yeah. Um, I do this because uh, whenever I optimize other people's websites, a lot of times they haven't used the best URLs possible and put their keywords in them. So I go back through and I say, okay, your web page is about this, so this should be the keyword for your URL. And then I take that other page that they have, because that might still be in the search engine's results. So whenever somebody clicks on that, I don't want them to get a page not found or the 404 page. I want them to go directly to that page for other reasons too. But I want them to go directly to um, the page that I want them at, not the old one. Um, also, I whenever I move my website um, to WordPress, I had a lot of files names that I want to change. Um, so that's another reason. And it, yes? Uh, I think it's also pretty good for branding. Like if you're saying, like you said, the court, if you have like a Twitter page, a Facebook, a MySpace, you can just do court.com slash Twitter, mm -hmm. or court.com slash MySpace. They all go, so you're seeing the court names and you work, you know, and just easy to remember. Right, okay. Yes. And in addition to that, what I've heard from people that I work with with SEO is that if it's a three, if it's three one is the permanent one, right? The, the permanent redirect, Google will uh, associate the all the search engine ranking that you have on the old URL, the old name, can be transferred to the new name. So the thing you're redirecting to if it's a permanent redirect, because you're basically telling the search engine, not just the people that you're redirecting, that oh, this is the site, this is the location for that same content. Right. This new name. Exactly. So if you had a lot of links pointing to that other page too, all that, you know, that's good that you have links out there pointing to a page. You don't want to ruin that link juice, so that's going to pass on to the to the new page. Right. Good point. Okay. Um. So again, I put these on my uh, website. Site.com. And then these are the names of the of each of the plugins, and then this is the URL for the plugin. And I just actually just pulled down this information directly from the website. So it has a lot of good features, the redirection tool. But um, other good one, Google XML sitemaps. This is really handy. Um, so it generates uh, XML sitemap, and that's something that Google, Yahoo, Bing, they all want you to do um, so that they can read your site easily. But this is also great because every time you put up a new post or a new page, it's going to update and it'll automatically send something over to Google and Yahoo and Bing and ask.com. Um, and then this is the 
settings for the external sitemaps. So you can see it, it tells you here um, Google, Yahoo, Bing, they were successfully notified. Sorry, I can turn this off again. Is this all you have to do? Um, is install a plugin and configure it, or you have to make your folder writable because it's going to write the XML file? You have to do that to install the plugins to begin with. Yeah, you can't install any of the plugins unless your folders are readable. Alright, so it's all, if I can install plugins, then it's all right. Okay. Yeah, and then once you install it, I mean, they have default settings, and you just act, you activate the plugin. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about that. Um, the other good plugin, SEO Friendly Images, um, it automatically adds alt and title attributes. Does anyone use this? No? Okay. Um, so it improves traffic search results. Uh, because you're adding, if you have a lot of images on your website, it'll put them in for you. Yes? The alt and title tags also help with accessibility for screen readers for disabled users. Oh, so good point. Make sure your alt tags are very descriptive, so it's not just a picture or a picture or whatever. It's a little descriptive for the developer. Right. So it's also good for people who are handicapped. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something? Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, the no follow case by case. We talked about um, a plugin. I think John Carmen mentioned uh, the no no follow plugin. Do follow. He, he, he mentioned follow. the do follow plugin. This is a no follow case by case. <coughs> so what this will do? It'll allow all of your links to um, be followed. And then if you don't want to have them followed, you you just you put a slash. What is it? You just put a slash don't follow at the end of the URL. And the reason, I mean, you'd want to do this, if, if you're blogging about um, somebody, like if you're just in Kanaki and you have a blog about douchebag marketers, <laughs> and she <laughs> <he> does, um, <laughs> um, if you don't want to give any of them link juice to their website and, and you're, you know, if you're directing somebody to their website and you're like, oh, these people are, you know, you don't like them. Um, you don't want to give them any link to so you put a don't follow. But if you want people to leave comments on your blog, um, WordPress automatically, their default is to have a no follow. So, but a lot of times people will want to leave comments because then they'll get that link juice. So, it depends what you're after, I guess, as far as um, what you're trying to accomplish with your blog or your website. Yes? What is it effectively doing? Where is, where is it telling it to come follow? Where is it telling people that? To the URL that you're directing them to. Like what is that impacting? Uh, so it, it means visitors can click on a link and go to that site, mm -hmm. but that site does not get points in their SEO. Right, analytics. but it, it's not like a road, it's not about editing a robot.txt file. No, uh -uh. this is just something that Google spiders, they go out and they look and they see, okay, this website has so many links back to it, but this number of them are don't follow, and this so number of them no, do like, follow. there's no record that you can go and locate the past and follow, and like, the end of the day. Do you have anything like that? I don't know. Yes. How, how important is this? Because the last time I read Google about it, it seemed like it's more of an issue for them when they index your site and you have a no-follow link to something else on your own site. When it goes to another domain, I think they still follow the link anyway. Yeah, they still follow some of the links, but it doesn't have as much of an impact as a do-follow would have. Oh, uh, so rank, ranking of, all right. Yeah, but it does, have, it does have an impact. Even if you're leaving comments on blogs that have don't follow, it's still... Yeah, are there practical ways of doing this so that you don't end up accidentally black hatting yourself? You know, so that if you're linking between the sites, it doesn't look like you're gaming the system being used with no follow. As long as you're not gaming the system, you're fine. I mean, it can just help you that way. If, if <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, you have two sites that are really closely tied together, but you don't want it to look like you're just uh, trying to 
make extra links. Right. I mean, unless you have a whole system set up and it's really seedy, <coughs> you're not going to pay too much attention to it. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so another plugin, Platinum SEO Pack. Does anybody use this? It's supposedly like it generates. Um, I haven't really used this one, but it's. Um, <coughs> I've heard people say good things about it, but it um, generates SEO relevant med tags automatically, and um, it has a three or one redirect. So again, some of these you don't want to use with with the other ones because they might override. I use that on one of my sites. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't know that it puts a tag in the footer that decided I'll run to the bottom. So they're using your site with their SEO. Oh, okay. I didn't like that. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. okay. All right. There, there you have it. Don't use that one. There wasn't any way to turn it off or to take it off. I didn't see an easy way to take it off because a lot of plugins will have a little check box that will say to give us credit or something like that. They didn't have that. When I look at it at that point, they may have added it now. When I saw it, used it a couple months ago, um, it wasn't there. And so I, I decided not to use it. Just to it. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep anyone from getting lunch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. No it might not be. It's kind of crowded today. Yeah. Um, but uh, another one is the SEO Smart Links. Um, this is good for linking keywords and phrases on your blogs and posts um, and your tags and your categories. Did someone say something? Smart links? Yeah, smart links. And then these are just some um, resources. Um, these are really good, actually, all these resources here. So, like I said, if you um, want to copy this, it's on my blog, on my website. Yes? Hey, uh, how important is it to have a, a web-based site? Is that a good, uh, oh, that's important as well. Yeah, because it's for your visitors. So you want you always want to have a site map for your visitors as well. And I think that the search engines they kind of look at that too, because a lot of like affiliate sites or weirdo websites they don't have those. So I think they place some value on websites that do. All right. Also, it's required sometimes by state if you're a, a, like a uh, municipal organization. Oh, okay. Uh, 